Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Chaf, Lamed, Mem, Yom, Samech, Ayin, Pei, Fet, Sadi, Kuf, Reish, Shun, Sin, Tav, Now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another lesson in our series, From the Aleph Bet, a series for anyone of any age who wishes to learn how to read and understand Hebrew, especially the Hebrew that's associated with the experience of Judaism here in the United States. I'm Mark Golub. As always, it's a wonderful pleasure to be with you again for another lesson. And again, I always start the same way because the Emails and letters keep coming in more and more each week from every city where we're being seen right now. And I can't thank all of you enough for the first the kind words you've said about uh, from the Aleph Bet and for me personally. And yes, I'm thrilled to be able to provide you with uh, Hebrew sheets for lessons and worksheets. And I'm happy to answer any of the questions you have about how the Hebrew language works. So please continue to be in touch with me. As always, we're going to begin with a quick review of the letters we've learned so far, especially if you're joining the series for the first time now. We've so far taught you 17 of the 22 Hebrew letters, and you'll see the entire Hebrew alphabet on the screen right now. These are the Hebrew letters we've learned thus far, beginning with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph, correct. And what sound does the Aleph make? Yes, the Aleph is one of the two silent letters in the Hebrew alphabet. As the Hebrew language has developed, the Aleph no longer makes a sound. It is simply pronounced with the vowel that either goes under, on top of, or to the left of the letter Aleph. The Aleph is silent. The second letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the Bet, correct, making the sound of the English letter B. The third letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the Gimel. Very good. What I call the galloping Gimel. It's the only letter with legs. And we have this galloping Gimel, the G, the hard G sound in English. The fourth Hebrew letter of the alphabet is Dalid, Mitsuyan. And some people see it as a swinging door. Dalid. And the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the letter Hey, very good. It makes the sound of the English letter H, and it's the only Hebrew letter with a hole in its side, a hole, and also I see it as a hayloft of a barn. The eighth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the letter Chet. Again, it has the sound of the slight clearing of the throat. There is no English equivalent. The letter Chet. And we tend to designate this letter in transliterated English with the letters CH because there is no CH sound in Hebrew. So we can use the CH to express the clearing of the throat, the ch sound, the Chet. Mitsuyan. Also, we always point out to you the chet looks very much like the hey, except it has no hole. And it also looks like the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the letter tough, Mitsuyan, the only letter with a big toe. Very good, Alex. So you see here the hey, the chet, the tough. The letter in the middle is the chet that makes the slight clearing of the throat sound, Mitsuyan. The tenth letter of the alphabet is the letter Yud Mitsuyan. And the Yud acts just like a Y does in English. It is either a consonant or a vowel. If the Yud has a vowel of its own, it's the consonant sound Y or Y, the same as English. If there is no vowel associated with the Yud, either under it or after it, 
the yud is added to the preceding vowel and becomes part of that vowel, exactly the way the y acts in the English language. The eleventh letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the kuf mitsuyan. Some people see it as a cuff link inside the cuff, or as a cat's eye. Some of my young students have suggested they see a cat's eye in the cuff. It makes the English sound of the letter K. It looks a little bit like a bet, but the bet has the bed at the bottom, while the cuff is round like a backward C. The twelfth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the Hebrew letter Lamed, Mitsuyan, and it makes the L sound. And you can almost see an L at the very top of the Lamed. And the thirteenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is a letter we've only shown you in the form it takes at the end of a word. This is the final Mem, Mitsuyan. It's the final Mem. It makes the M sound. And again, this Mem will only be written at the end of a word. If a Mem is written inside the word, it's written differently, and we're going to show you that later on in this lesson. The fourteenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the Hebrew letter Nun, and it simply makes the N sound in English. And the fifteenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the letter Samech. Very good. And notice the Samech has a slice in the bottom right-hand corner. It makes the sound of the English letter S, slice in the Samech. It looks a lot like a final Mem, as you see here, except the final Mem does not have a slice, and the Samech does. The sixteenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is a letter we referred to last time. It is the other silent letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It is called the ayin, and it makes no sound at all, just as the aleph makes no sound. So here you see the two silent letters in the Hebrew alphabet, the aleph and the ayin, and both simply make the sound of the vowel associated with the letter. The seventeenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet we taught you as a family. First there's the pe, and the pe has a point in it. You put the point in the pe, but if you take the point out of the pe, it still is a pe, but it's pronounced as the English letter F instead of P, and when it is pronounced as an F, we tend to call the pe a fe. But the truth is that the pe and the fe are the exact same letter with or without a dagesh. With a dagesh, the pe is pronounced p, pe. Without a dagesh, the dot inside it, it's pronounced as the letter f. And depending on where the letter comes in a word, determines whether there is or is not a dagesh put inside that letter. But the most important thing for you to remember about Hebrew letters with or without a dagesh is that in almost every instance the dagesh does not change the sound of a letter and the letter is the same letter whether it does or does not have the dagesh. And there's one more piece of the pe family, it's the final fe. And the final fe is written as if someone grabbed hold of the horizontal bottom of the fe and pulled it straight down below the line upon which letters are written. And most final letters in Hebrew do go below the line. And here you see the final fe. And you will only see this final fe at the end of a word. And so the pe family is pe, fe, and final fe. Mitsuyan. The twentieth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the letter Resh, Mitsuyan. And notice the Resh is round in the upper right-hand corner. It looks a little bit like a Dalid, but notice the Dalid is not round in the upper right-hand corner. And so the Resh 
makes the R sound, or when you hear Israelis speak, it's a slightly rolled R, similar to a French R. Ugh. So the resh is the 20th letter. Here is the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the letter Shin, Mitsuyan. It should remind you of an ancient ship, the kind that uh, Columbus used to sail across and discover America, the name of the Pinta, the Santa Maria, the Shin. And the Shin makes the sound of the English letters S-H, Sh, the Shin. And again, we already showed you the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the letter Tuf, the only letter with a big toe. Mitsuyan. And those are the 17 letters we've shown you thus far. Here is the 18th letter, and it is the letter Mem. This is the Hebrew letter Mem. It makes the M sound. You've already learned the final Mem, which you see next to the Mem here. But the Mem is written this way when it comes at the beginning or inside in the middle of a word the letter mem. And when I teach this letter mem to young people, I teach them, it sort of looks like a man climbing a mountain. A man climbing a mountain. That's the mem. And from my childhood, when I read about the mouse that would come in and out of his mouse hole, I see a mouse hole at the bottom of this mem. This is the only letter with a mouse hole. So there are a lot of ways to remember that this letter makes the M sound. One more time, a man climbing a mountain and a mouse, what a sweet little mouse, going in and out of the mouse hole of the mem. The mem makes the M sound in the Hebrew alphabet. So let's take the mem and let's put some vowels under it or next to it and see how you would read the mem as a syllable. How would you read this syllable? Good. The vowel is the patach, ah. You'd read this syllable as ma, mitsuyan. If we put a kamatz under the mem, it is read ma again, mitsuyan. The patach and the kamatz are read the same way. Here is another Hebrew vowel, and remember Hebrew vowels are dots and dashes, and there is one Hebrew vowel for each Hebrew syllable, always a one-to-one -one relationship. If you count the number of dots and dashes in a word, you know how many vowels there are, and if you know how many vowels there are in a word, you know how many syllables are in a word. Now take a look at this mem with another Hebrew vowel next to it. And this Hebrew syllable is pronounced Mo, Mitsuyan. This is the Hebrew vowel O, or as Israelis would say it, O. So they would read this syllable more as Mo. And you can remove the vertical line under the dot, the vav from the vowel, and just leave the dot, and it's still pronounced Mo, or Mo. Both are the cholom, either cholom male, with the vav underneath it, or the cholom chaser, without the vav under it. And one of the ways we remember the sound of the cholom is if you get hit on top of the head, you say, oh. But if you get hit in the stomach, you say, oo. And here we have the Shuruk, the U vowel in Hebrew. And so this syllable is pronounced Mu, Mitsuyan, Mu. And there's one more way to write the vowel U in Hebrew. It's three dots going down from left to right as if someone is sliding down the slide. One goes U again. This is the Kubutz. And you pronounce it the same way, mu, mu. So there are two ways to express the vowel u in Hebrew. And here they are, the shuruk and the kubutz.
And then we have the dotted vowels under the Hebrew letters. And so we're going to put one, two, and three dotted vowels up for you. First, the one dot under a Hebrew letter is the vowel E, the Hirik. So this syllable would be pronounced me, Mitsuyan, me. By the way, you can add a yud to many Hebrew vowels. If you add a yud to the dotted vowels, the vowels do not change their sound. So here we see me. We add a yud to it. It is still me, the syllable me. Two dots, let's say re, is pronounced a, as in the word say or cake. So this syllable is pronounced may, Mitsuyan, may. And if you add a yud to it, it does not change the sound. The syllable remains may, Mitsuyan. And finally, three dots under a letter. The segol makes the sound of the English vowel e, the short e, as in the word bed, e, the segol. And this syllable, therefore, is me, mitsuyan. And you can add a yud to a segol. It does not change the sound. With a yud, this is still pronounced me. And so with the yuds in place, here are the three dotted vowels, me, me, and me. Me, 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 the three dotted vowels. And those are all the vowels we've learned so far. And you can see the mem is one of the easiest letters to use. It simply makes the M sound in English. Here now are two Hebrew words, very easy Hebrew words, that are basically uh, questions. This is the word we've just read as a syllable. It is me. Exactly right. And me in Hebrew is how you ask the question, who. Me is the word who in Hebrew. And here's another very simple Hebrew word using the mem, one syllable because there's only one vowel, and the word is pronounced ma, mitsuyan. And ma means either how or what. How or what. Ma. Ma. And many of you already know the word ma from a very well-known prayer or passage in the Jewish tradition. It's read on Passover. And the passage is known in English as the four questions. In Hebrew they begin ma nishtana. And here's how you write nishtana in Hebrew. And the ma nishtana are the introductory words to the four questions. Ma meaning what or how, and nishtana really means different. So ma nishtana means what is the difference, or how is different, and then it goes on to say this night from all the other nights. Ma nishtana, ma either meaning how or what. I want to show you another word with a mem in it. See if you can read this two vowel and therefore two-syllable word. Take a look at this word. Can you read this word? Two vowels, therefore two syllables, and the first syllable is show, very good. And the second syllable is Mer, Mitsuyan. And the word therefore would be pronounced Shomer, Mitsuyan. And Israelis tend to shorten the Tsere in certain words to make it sound more like a Segol. So many Israelis would say Shomer rather than Shomer. But either way is correct. The word is Shomer or Shomer. And we've taught you that Hebrew words are based on three letter roots. Here is the three-letter root of the word shomer. Shin, mem, and resh. 
And what does this three-letter root mean? It means to guard, to keep, to protect. Shin Mem Resh. And the word Shomer is the word for a guard or one who protects. Shomer, a guard. And I want to show you one more thing about this word Shomer. If you imagine that the Cholom, the O, after the first root letter, the Shin, changes into the number one, the way to translate this word is one who guards, or one who keeps, or one who protects, or even one who observes. And therefore the word Shomer, and now we see it again as it's written in Hebrew, Shomer really means one who guards or keeps or protects or observes. One is a Shomer, Shomer, Shin Mem Resh. And if that's true, can you figure out what this two Hebrew word phrase means. How are these two words translated together? Take a look. You now know both of these Hebrew words. You see, incidentally, a dash between them. In Hebrew, the dash is written at the top of the word. And very often in English, the dash is translated by the English word of. The dash connects two Hebrew words. And in English, it's as if you've added the word of. So you have a phrase. Can you read this phrase to yourself out loud? How would you pronounce these two words together? If you said, Shomer Shabbat, or Shomer Shabbat, you are 100% correct. This is Shomer Shabbat, and what would a uh, Shomer Shabbat B. And you're correct if you say a Shomer Shabbat would be one who observes or keeps the Shabbat. An observer, a keeper, a guarder of the Shabbat, a Shomer Shabbat. And many of you have often heard the phrase Shomer Shabbat. I don't know if you've always understood it, but you do now. An observant Jew is often called a Shomer Shabbat because one who tends to observe the Shabbat tends to keep all of Jewish life. Shomer Shabbat. And here it comes from the Hebrew root Shin Men Reish. And of course you already know the word Shabbat. Shomer Shabbat. Now let me show you something else about the Shva, which as I've said before is the secret to reading Hebrew. Remember, a Shva is the only set of dots which is not a vowel. The all-important rule, a shva is never counted as a vowel. And there are two kinds of shvas. There's the silent shva and the pronounced shva. And neither shva, even if it's pronounced, the shva is never counted as a vowel. Alex, is a shva ever counted as a vowel? Never. Never. A shva is never counted counted as a vowel, even when it's pronounced. Now when a shva is silent, it extends a syllable by one letter, the letter over the silent shva. And obviously a silent shva therefore ends a Hebrew syllable. Let me give you an example. Here again is the word shomer, a guard. We're going to add the plural ending or the plural suffix to the word shomer to make guards in the plural. And here you see we've added the suffix im to the end of the word shomer. By adding im to this word, we've made it plural, but notice now there is a shva under the mem. And this shva is silent. And the silent shva tells you 
to add the mem to the preceding shin and cholam, the shin and the o, to make the entire first syllable. And therefore, the first syllable of this word is pronounced shom. Very good. And if you were dividing this word into two syllables, you draw a vertical line after the mem and before the resh to divide this word into two syllables. The first syllable of this word is shom. And the second syllable is pronounced reem, mitsuyan. The resh with the hirik, the yud is part of the vowel, and the final mem. And here you see a word that has both the mem and the final mem in it. And the word is pronounced shom rim, shom rim. And if you roll the R, shom rim, mitsuyan. And it means guards. And here you see how a silent shva acts. It tells you to add the letter above it, the mem, to the letter and vowel in front of it, show to make one syllable it extends the syllable show by one letter to shom and that's how a silent shva works a pronounced shva on the other hand is pronounced as the short i i as in the english word fish i fish and a pronounced shva always begins a syllable with a grace note or a grace beat. And even though it is pronounced i, as in the word fish, the pronounced shva does not create a syllable of its own, but it's added to the letter and vowel that follow it. A silent shva extends a syllable and ends that syllable, but a pronounced shva begins a syllable by adding the letter above the pronounced shva to the letter and vowel that follow it. And since the pronounced shva always begins a syllable, we know that any time a shva is under the first letter of a word, it must begin the first syllable, and therefore it's pronounced. So here's an easy rule to remember about the pronounced shva. Whenever a shva is under the first letter of a word, the first letter of a word, it is always pronounced i, as in the English word, fish. And there are other times when a shva is pronounced as well. But for now, all I need you to remember is that when a shva comes under the first letter of a word, it is pronounced i, as in the English word, fish, even though the shva is still not counted as a vowel, and does not create a syllable of its own. And I should say something else to all of you who are in the process of learning Hebrew. You know, every language has its rules, and then there are ways the language is used. And very often the way it's used has nothing to do with the rules. If when you're reading a Hebrew word, you want to make a syllable out of a pronounced shva, there is no Hebrew police that's going to come and arrest you. You want to break a word up with a pronounced shva as if it stands alone as a syllable, that's fine. What's important to know, however, is that the pronounced shva does not create a syllable of its own, but is linked to the next vowel and letter to make the first entire syllable. And so again, a pronounced shva is a grace note. Most words are like quarter notes. Beat, beat, beat. Hebrew vowel, Hebrew vowel, Hebrew vowel. When you add a pronounced shva to a syllable, it's as if you're adding a grace note to that syllable. It's still just one syllable with a half beat leading into a full beat. And the important thing to remember is that a pronounced shva is never a syllable of its own in technical Hebrew. And it becomes more important when you look at very complicated words to know where to break the words up. The important thing to remember is the key to reading Hebrew is knowing how to handle the shva. The silent shva ends a syllable. The pronounced shva begins a syllable as a grace note. 
So let's take a simple example. Here's a word many of you will know. It's a word associated with the holiday of Hanukkah. Take a look at this word. How many vowels are in this word? Hopefully you said two because a shva is never counted as a vowel. So the two vowels are the cholom and the kamatz, mitsuyan. And if the word has two vowels, how many syllables does it have? Two is correct. This is a two-syllable word. And notice that this word does have a shva. Is this shva silent or pronounced? Pronounced is correct. Why? Because it's under the first letter of a word. Mitsuyan, and therefore obviously it begins a syllable. So what is the first syllable of this Hebrew word? If you said mino, you are correct. Mino. It's a one-syllable word, even though in English it sounds like it almost has two syllables, mi and no. But it's not mi, no. It's really mino. That's the first syllable of this word. And the second syllable, easy, is ra, mitsuyan. So put the word together, and the word is... Minorah, Mitsuyan, Minorah. Two syllables, Minorah. And what does the word Minorah mean? Well, it's built on a noun you already know. This noun here, do you remember this word? It is Nair, Mitsuyan, and Nair means candle, very good. And, uh, Menorah is a candle holder. That's all a menorah is. Something into which you place candles. It holds a nair. A menorah holds the nair. And that shows you the Hebrew letter mem and introduces you to the pronounced shva. Let's look at the words you've learned in this lesson. You've learned the word me, which means who. You've learned the word ma, which means how or what. You've learned the word shomer, a guard or a keeper or an observer. And you've learned the plural of shomer, shomrim, with the silent shva, shomrim or shomrim. Guards, observers, keepers. And you've learned the two-word phrase, Shomer Shabbat, Mitsuyan, Shomer Shabbat, one who observes or keeps the Sabbath. And again, it tends to be used to describe a traditionally observant Jew, a Shomer Shabbat. If you say to somebody, are you a Shomer Shabbat? It's the Jewish way of asking, are you an observant Jew? And I should mention, by the way, Jews don't normally call each other religious. The real question for a Jew is, are you observant? And the way to express that in Hebrew is, are you Shomer Shabbat? And you've also learned the word Minorah, candle holder, from the word Ner, candle, or candles. And I'll show you now one last Hebrew phrase, two Hebrew words you know. Can you read these two Hebrew words? Very good. Ma yafe. And ma yafe means how beautiful. And if you follow these Hebrew lessons on from the Aleph Bet, ma yafe, how beautiful, how wonderful it's been. And you should feel so proud of yourself. You have learned so much of the Hebrew alphabet, and you've begun to understand how to really use the Hebrew language. It's not simply pronouncing syllables. It's understanding Hebrew as a language. You're doing just that, and I'm thrilled to be working with you on From the Aleph Bet week after week. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of 
from the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of the series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more, we'll be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zayn, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kav, Chav, Lamed, Mem, Yon, Samech, Ha'in, Pei, Fet, Sadi, Kuf, Reish, Shun, Sen, Tav, Now I think I've said enough. <laughs>